this podcast is brought to you by Midwinter. These guys were a startup, an entrepreneurial startup some 10 years ago, way before it was even cool to be a tech startup, and have since then gone on to win every single award year after year after year when it comes to financial advice software. I use them, um, I know a lot of people that have, and if you haven't already jumped onto the new way of doing business, which is all cloud-based and API, so it all talks to each other, then go look at yourself in the mirror and sort yourself out and go get Midwinter. Awesome, guys. So welcome um, welcome to XY Live for this week. Um, super excited to bring this to you. We've got Catherine Gross, uh, superstar advisor slash personal coach at 12 Wealth. Um, and she's going to share with us this morning um, a bit a bit of uh, her background and how she integrates uh, overall personal coaching with uh, with financial advice in her business. Thanks heaps for jumping on the call, guys. And um, like I said, uh, love you to get the message out. If you if you've got other people that um, would would benefit from this stuff, let them know. Tell them to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Um, so yeah, so Catherine. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, so just just for I know you obviously you're you're a prominent person within the industry, but just for those of of, the, uh, of those watching in that haven't met you before, um, can you just give us a tiny bit about your background, your business, what it's called, um, who you work with, how long you've been going for? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm not so sure that I'm prominent. Um, my business is um, quite new. And the name of my business. Is 12 Wealth. Um, I started in November, so we're a very new business, uh, though I've worked in finance and in and around advice for most of my career. Um, my clients are wealth accumulators, predominantly women. Um, and I think that, you know, to be frank, they're, they're just like me. You know, I'm trying to attract people that are in a similar demographic to myself. Yeah, awesome. And so um, before we talk a bit about how you work with your clients, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Because I know you spent a bit of time as a coach, Morning Clayton. Um, and tell us about this, the, yeah, what, what you did, how long you did it for and what sort of stuff you were doing when you were doing the, um, the coaching as well. Yeah, of course, of course. Look, I, I spent the first 12 years of my um, career in investment banking and I really benefited from an executive coach during some of my time there. Mm -hmm. and when I left investment banking, um, I was actually asked to come and work with one of the coaching companies that I had benefited from. So yeah. I worked for three years, um, predominantly running women's leadership programs and coaching women on a leadership journey. So that was really about giving um, women the confidence and resilience to step up in financial services. Okay. And how did that work? Like, were you working, was it mainly one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching and, and how did you... How did you run that sort of coaching setup? Look, the programs I ran were a mixture of both. Um, the groups that we coached were typically 12 to 20, uh, and we would meet every six weeks. And then between those group sessions, we would do individual coaching sessions to focus on the content of the group session. So if we were working on resilience, then we, you know, do some coaching around that topic. But often coaching would, you can't really structure coaching. You know, often. Yep. Um, people would walk in with a huge problem um, and we would just focus on that. Um, and it was really about helping them uh, manage the corporate landscape and yes. figure out the career that they wanted for themselves and how they could use their strengths to achieve that. Okay. And so what was the thinking when you you obviously decided that you wanted to, to start your business? Um, and what was the sort of the thought process behind that? Was that a need that you saw or um, how did that all come about? I think it was twofold then. I um, I went looking for a uh, financial advisor about three or four years ago. Um, yeah. and at that time, I'd actually moved out of coaching because although I love coaching, I really missed the markets. I didn't think I would, but yeah. I love the learning um, and I love that every day is different in the markets. And mm -hmm. so I started thinking about how I could use my financial services experience and my coaching experience. And it, financial advice was kind of logical. So I... Um, this is going back three or four years ago, I started thinking about how I could get a better feel for what financial advice was. Um, although I'd always worked in financial services, I'd never seen a financial advisor, I'd never been exposed to them. I'd always worked at the institutional level. Um, so I took a job running a um, intermediary distribution business 
and very quickly got to learn a lot about financial advisors and their businesses, mainly oh. staff that I worked with. Um, and that then kind of led me to thinking maybe I need a financial advisor and I, wow. couldn't, I couldn't find one um, that met my needs. I ended up finding one, but yeah. even though I knew four or 500 advisors, um, or I didn't know them well, but I kind of knew what they were doing. Most of them didn't have the business model that suited um, what I was looking to do. Looking for. So um, that kind of, you know, started my business plan um, and got me, that made me start studying and kind of, to be honest, put a, put a rocket into the business plan and got me moving. Okay. Yeah. And, and so tell us, started, sorry, go on. Yeah, my financial advisor really helped me with that too. So I've got a great financial advisor and he helped me realise that I could, uh, I did sort of have the wherewithal and help give me the confidence that I should just start my own business, not go and work for someone else. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Like, so you, you had a coach and benefited from getting coached, went into coaching and then went in, wanted some financial advice, got a financial advisor and then decided to just merge the two sort of together. That's right. That's right. Awesome. So, um, so tell us then. So, what is your what is your sort of service look like, and and what is it that you are trying to achieve when you work with your clients? Look, I think fundamental to my belief system is I, you know, at, at the base of it all, I think we all just want to help people, um, and I really, I really do think that um, for us to be wealthy and have a lot of financial wealth, we have to be managing managing our human capital really well. Um, and if we don't get that right, then we won't be happy with our wealth, um, but we're also unlikely to be as wealthy. So if we can be using our strengths well and managing ourselves well, then mm -hmm. the, you know, the whole package is better. So when I first sit down with my clients, um, right up front, I, I, I tell them that. Um, and that just that just puts the idea that I'm a sounding board for more than money on the table really early. Um, yeah. And it's sort of um, not like I, I don't say this is a coaching conversation. That's not what I say. Um, yes. Sort of really talk about how the two are integrated, and it means that the initial meeting can start out being um, without the clients even necessarily meaning for it to be, it means a lot of it is a coaching conversation in that first initial meeting. Uh-huh. And so what's the what's the idea that you're um, you're trying to work through with clients when they say, you know, what do I get as with my relationship with you? Obviously it covers money, but what's the conversation that you have? Well the conversation's different for each client. Um, you know, I think because I've spent a lot of time um, coaching and working with people, I'll very quickly try and assess, um, you know, the sort of person the client is in the first meeting. So um, if someone is, you know, a natural connector um, or a mo more emotional personality, then there'll be more of a focus on their emotional needs in that first meeting. So uh -huh. it could be that... They're a client, every client is different, so it's hard for me to, um, you know, that's the nature of, I guess, coaching and active listening. There's not a formula. Um, yes. But um, if the client has just been through a divorce and doesn't know what their future looks like, then there'll be a lot more um, working around, you know, what their strengths are, working out, you know, how, how they see their life in the next two, 10 years, what the, breaking down the steps to get there, um, helping them build up their confidence you know, reintegrate with their network and use their network to get a role. Yep. You know, it really depends on the person. Um, but it's about, you know, or it could be that the client runs their own business and they just want a sounding board to work out um, how they deal with the problems with staff, um, you know, how they, how they give their staff more professional development, where to start looking for that. It's very different. It's client by client. Um, conversation. Okay, and so, okay, it is very fairly different. But is there a, an ideal sort of outcome that you you would like to deliver on for your clients in the first, you know, uh, twelve months or however long it takes that you work together? Yeah, oh, definitely. So I think that um, each of my clients, I have a formal meeting with each quarter. Um, yeah. 
in the first 12 months, the idea is that the initial meeting um, is face to face. Uh, and then in the first 12 months, each of those four meetings may be face to face. It depends on the client. That's yes. awesome. After that, it will be a phone check in. So just by having that structured, giving that structured quarterly meeting kind of helps provide logical value for the client. Yes. Um, and then the, I think for clients to really value what you do, there needs to be um, that sort of logical value, which is, you know, the financial plan, the meeting, you know, the what can I see? But yes. there's got to be that emotional value. And the emotional value is partly where the coaching kicks in, but it's also about trust. Yes. Um, so, you know, building trust. I, I guess in some ways I'm using coaching to help build trust as well. Um, okay. Yeah, so it, it goes it goes both ways. It's good for me, but I think it's also good for the client. Mm -hmm. And so what is the, um, I know we had a chat about this, but what does a typical review meeting look like? So you do you quarterly catch-ups with your clients. What do you go through and where is the line when it comes to financial advice and the, and the personal um, coaching type work that you do? Um, I think they're quite intermingled. Um, and it, to be completely frank, because my business is only six months old, um, this could change. You know, I think obviously in the first 12 to 18 months, there's a lot of heavy lifting in the financial advice piece of it. Yes. Um, so the way I kind of see it is, um, there'll always be bits of financial work to do, but part of um, justifying um, and outlining your ongoing advice fees is the coaching piece. So I think longer term, coaching will, will play an ongoing role as well. But in terms of how I run my quarterly meetings, which is what you asked, what you asked, yeah. um, what I've only obviously the business is six months old, so I haven't done hundreds of them, <laughs> but. Um, what we typically do is I, I sort of I use a coaching framework to run them. So there's a coaching model that I call Happy Sad Happy, um, just yeah. because you remember. And that kind of starts out with, you know, um, so you know, tell me what's been going well in the last quarter. Um, mm -hmm. and it opens people to talk about anything. It's not about that finances at all. Yes. Um, and that could be that they've got a new boyfriend, they've got a new job, they've bought a house, they've found a property they want to buy, which becomes financial. Um, yes. Or it could be that they've the managed... boyfriend part. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, and then I'll typically say, okay, and what's not been, you know, what hasn't gone well? Let's talk about mm -hmm. that. And that could be, once again, it could be financial. Um, you know, they told me that they'd stick to a budget and they haven't been. Um, and let's get to the bottom of why that might be. Um, yes. Or it could be emotional. You know, my marriage is falling apart. What do I need to do? Um, you know, it's, um, and then it's about working, once we've got everything on the table, um, trying to give them some tools to make, feel, make them feel better. So um, happy again. So, you know, you've gone, you started well, you've sort of taken this roller coaster down to what's not so good. And now yeah. how can I make you feel better again? Yeah, okay. And do you find that those things are typically mo more money related or more personal related when you have that conversation? A big mix. Yeah. So, um, it really depends on the client. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, it's, uh, and the level of trust you've built with the client. Yes. Um, you know, and what the client has come into the relationship expecting. So some people really buy into the coaching idea. Um, yeah. And, you know, they see value in that. And that emotional value is part of why they're happy to pay the fee. Yes. Um, others, it's all about, they, others definitely see me more as a um, someone that brings together seven super funds, fills in their forms, you know, yeah. manages their money. Um, and that's okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to try and be a coach to someone that doesn't feel like they need one. Because they won't yeah. back that. Yeah, okay. So just, yeah, one last question on that before I turn it over to Clayton. Um, but have you had any clients push back on the coaching and say, well, okay, that'll, that's great, but really I don't want that. I, I just, um, I just want the financial side taken care of. And then how does that all, um, sort of fit together? That hasn't happened. Um, no. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, that said, um, it, that might, it, I'm sure it'll happen at some stage. Um, yeah. and I'll need to judge at the time 
I'm I'm happy with not providing a service that costs that effective. You know, I'm happy to provide the service the client needs. Yes. But at that point, um, that's going to happen more in the initial advice meeting in that initial engagement. Yeah. Um, and I would need to make a judgment on whether we're going to work well together. Um, yeah. um, and I I just I don't know I don't know yet is the answer because it hasn't happened. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Well, look, I'm just going to turn it over to Clay to for some follow up questions, guys. Just for everyone listening in, if anyone's got any questions um, for Catherine that they want answered, you just type them in the question box on the right hand side of the page there, uh, and we'll come to them shortly. Uh, excellent. Well, hi, Catherine. I'm just uh, stepping in for Phil. Um, Look, first of all, before we get started, I, six months into starting my business, hired a an executive coach and a leadership coach, and it changed my life. Uh, it was one of the best things I've ever done. So to see someone doing what we do and then doing uh, that skill as well, absolutely phenomenal. Considering this whole XY you know, experiment uh, is basically about finding out what other advisors are doing besides financial advice you know besides that money piece so to hear that you're doing that is first of all like very you know i'd like to commend you on that that's awesome um so with adrian uh he wants to know is how far are you going with helping someone Um, develop their human capital i think when someone's developing their human capital if you're coming at it from a coaching ethos um i think it's about having a toolkit um that you can draw on that's different for each person so uh, most of my clients are women. Um, a lot of them uh, have either been through divorce or been through something that's kind of caused them to come and see a financial advisor. And they're not actually coming to me for, to be an executive coach. They don't actually realise they have a need at that point. Um, but I sort of, I use the coaching toolkit to help them. So it might be that they um, lack confidence. Um, or, or trying to work out what their future now holds because they've had a major change in their life. Um, so I might start out um, doing some work around their strengths and I use um, a tool um, called Strength Finder for that, which you might know, Clayton, if you've worked for the coach. Um, and, um, you know, if, I, if they're having, tr- having trouble with relationships, um, having trouble with networking, then I'll work with them around building a networking plan um, to try and unroad them back in, unroad them back into the workforce. Um, awesome. I'm not actually sort of. I'll get them thinking about the sort of study they could do if they need to, how they can fit it in their life, the practical stuff. So it's quite pragmatic. It's not. Um, I, I'm not a counsellor. It's quite. It's a lot more pragmatic than. What Is, is it is their career, is there, like obviously you spoke about work quite a fair bit and work takes up, you know, 95% of our clients' lives. So to be able to help them with that is is really cool. Um, so with Phil, he says um, he's interested in, in what's a rough breakdown of your fees um, if you're meeting with the client four times a year because obviously that's a, a, a one-to-one high, um, high time uh, or high, um, what do you call it, uh, expense on your time. So... Yeah, high touch. So what's um yeah what, what's sort of a rough? Yeah, so you don't have to go um, into specifics, of course, but I just sort of as well. Level. So um, they're invoiced around the time of that quarterly meeting. Um, my client, as I said, my business is only new. I've only got fourteen clients, so um, that might change dramatically. Um, at the moment, um, yes. none of my clients are paying me under five thousand yes. dollars a year, um, and the, the biggest clients paying me twelve thousand dollars a year. But, um, you know, I'm not looking to build a business with 200 clients. Right. So um, I'm trying to build a business with about 50 clients that mm. works with my um, stage of life um, and allows me to achieve what I want out of life. Um, so the high touch model actually allows me to yes. feel like I'm really helping my clients. Um, but it also means I have to be very careful about which clients I take on. Yes, absolutely. Because um, so you're looking to do probably around fifty clients. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and what's been the hardest um, thing about starting your business? Uh, look, I think at the moment um, it's just workload. <laughs> um, um, 
And I, I obviously haven't been a financial advisor before. Yeah. So the hardest thing about starting my business was finding the right um, mentor and dealer group. Oh, sorry, licensee, to be frank. Um, I kind of knew that if I was going to start my own business, I needed to surround myself with good people. Um, and I've definitely found that. So that was really lucky. Um, the administration and compliance, everyone says it, but um, I can't wait to have some staff who can help me with that. <laughs> awesome. Who's your, just as a follow up, who's your licensee, Catherine? Yeah. Um, yeah I'm yeah, with absolutely. the Wealth Network. Uh, they're a new group. Um, I'm, I'm their first corporate operator. Awesome. Oh, cool. Um, we've got a couple more questions here. Uh, this one's from Mark. Do yeah, you use zero? any tools to help um, clients with uh, their budgeting and cash but, um, You know, I know that I've heard Money Brilliant. It's very good. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, but, yeah, I'm using zero. Okay. Um, and this is a question from Jenny. Is the money conversation easier with women or more complex? I don't think it's complex? any different. I think... Um, I think, if I just step back into coaching for a minute, I think that everyone has a different operating style um, and the operating style drives the money conversation more than the woman versus man. Um, the other thing I should say, Jenny, and Ben knows this, is the majority of my clients have been referred by my hairdresser. Um, and that that is really different, right? So uh, cool. I think that is because I'm a woman. Um, and these women really yeah. trust their hairdresser, so she's a trusted referrer, and then they trust me. So, yeah, that I think is very different. Um, you know, That's I amazing. don't know how many barbers refer clients to you, Ben. No, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to have a, have a solid chat with uh, with my barber next time I see him. <laughs> Maybe a beard barber. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, there, there's there, there's another there's another Phil uh, question come from Phil. Uh, looking back in the last six months in business, um, would you have done anything different? Not yet, um, not yet. But I think if you ask me that in six months, I'll yeah. say definitely. I just uh, not yet is the answer to that. I feel like I've uh, been through a, a mixture of um, luck, and I'll call it wisdom. Um, I feel like I've landed. I'm really happy with where I'm at. Um, I, I feel really nurtured by my um, licensee, and I feel like um, uh, I have the clients are coming. So it's you know, and there's been no big blow ups yet. <laughs> it's always good, yeah. um, Catherine. I just got a question for you. So I know. <laughs> so you work as a uh, completely fee only advisor, from what I understand. Um, so just, just given we've got a little bit of time, I'm interested, what's the, um, what's your approach when it comes to that and, and the discussions that you have with clients and have you had any, uh, have you had any pushback or any difficulties or any tips for anyone thinking about maybe, you know, transitioning their business that way over time? Yeah, look, I definitely, you definitely have to have those conversations. Um, I, I, I deal with them differently in each circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple of clients who I haven't taken on because they've tried to negotiate with my on my fees up front. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that kind of indicates to me that they're unlikely to value my work on an ongoing basis, um, sure. which means I'll do a heap of heavy lifting for them in the first 12 months and then they'll probably leave. Um, and I, to be frank, um, you know, I'm not going to make have value for money for my clients in the first 12 months. It, it comes later. Yes. Um, so, um, but the conversation is very much around my business model. So I explain to them that I am a high touch business model. Yes. Um, I am only looking to have 50 clients. Um, that means I have to be selective about who I take on. Um, I explain that I see myself as more than a financial advisor, that I'm also a sounding board and a coach yeah. um, and I completely understand if that doesn't meet their needs um, and I also explain I do talk through if I think it's worth it <laughs> um, the fact that they're going to be paying 20% less for their insurance um, that they're not going to be paying um, funds under advice fees 
and I give them an idea of what that is in dollar terms based on what they've told me. Um, but to be frank, I've only had one or two people who have, who I think have not signed up because of fees. Okay. And any tips for anyone thinking about maybe moving their their business that way over time? So anything to look out for or? It's a good question, Ben, but I don't know if it's one I can answer because I have, I've never been a financial advisor that's run a business um, earning referral fees or commissions. So I feel like it's hard for me to provide advice um, on how to transition a business. Um, yes. You know, I think... Um, but look, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't feel like I can provide any advice. Yeah, fair enough. No, that's fine. Um, for, I got just got another question. For if someone was thinking about maybe broadening out their service offering for their clients and moving down a similar path to yourself in integrating, you know, personal coaching alongside financial advice, what what would be the pathway? What would be, you know the either advice that you give them do you think it might be better to partner with a coach or do you think it's you know that they would need to have that conversation themselves and then yeah what do they what should they do to um to go down that path uh, look i think uh it, i think it depends on mm. the individual um obviously i was a coach first but um i also went away and did a coaching accreditation which helps give you the the toolbox that you can draw on and understand, just understand people and coaching conversations better. Um, yes. I think it really helps if you've had an executive coach, so you actually understand the value of proposition, um, yes. which, which I know Clayton does. Um, but I think it also depends on your target market. So my target market um, is wealth accumulating women. Um, I've obviously seen the benefit of coaching for professional women in that space, um, which makes it easy to use coaching without actually saying, I'm coaching you today. You know, it just becomes part of the value proposition without it even needing to. Um, so I think you could go down the path of partnering with a coach um, yes. and, and working together, and I could see that working quite well. Um, but then you've actually got to have the conversation about, I think you need an executive coach, you know, um, and yes. it's, a, it's a slightly, it's a slightly different um, conversation. And do you think that would in any way, apart from the difficulty with the conversation, detract from the relationship with the client if you've got maybe had a, a separate person coaching with, with their personal goals? Does that make sense in terms yeah. of the question? So if someone was thinking about maybe integrating that into their service offering and partnering with the coach to work with their clients, do you think, you know, that might, uh, yeah, detract from, from their relationship? I don't think, not necessarily. Um, I think it's about um, playing to your strengths. Um, so, um, you know, I think that like any principal advisor, if you're referring a client to a fantastic mortgage broker or a fantastic lawyer or a fantastic accountant that actually helps build trust and rapport between you and your clients so i think it can work to refer to an executive coach um, as part of the daily proposition um I, I think it can work um obviously not what i'm doing but i think that in building my business i kind of knew i was drawing on two things one was executive coaching um and the other was you know my network um, yeah. And I kind of knew that if I drew on those two, I'd attract clients. So, um, it, yeah, it kind of, I think it depends on how you're looking to attract clients and how you want to run your business. Yeah, makes sense. Awesome. Well, Catherine, I'm just mindful of everyone's time. We're, we've just hit the 9.30 mark. Um, but I just want to say massive thank you for joining us today uh, and, and sharing, you know, some of your experience. I uh, hope everyone's found this valuable. Guys, for everyone listening in, um, just a reminder for um, for people that maybe aren't on the call, let them know that this stuff's happening every fortnight, same time, same place. Share out the link with them. Um, they can, if they jump on the XY Advisor mailing list through the XY Advisor website, they'll get notified when these things are on. Uh, and you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel 
Um, and also watch if for the people that haven't seen some of the ones that we've done in the past, um, the replays are all up there live now as well. Um, so awesome, guys. Thanks heaps for joining us, and we'll see you in a fortnight. Um, we're super excited for the next one. We've got Paul Gilbert, who uh, is a social media specialist for David Kosh's business, Pinstripe Media, uh, and he also runs a, a consulting a private consulting firm for personal branding. And I caught up with Paul a few weeks back uh, and, and I've integrated already some of the tips that he's given me um, and, and they've just, just worked really well. So I, I think um, clearly everyone here is quite social. So I think you guys will get a lot out of it. Look forward to seeing you in a fortnight's time. Uh, and thanks again, Catherine, for joining us. Anyone that wants to connect with Catherine, um, LinkedIn, would LinkedIn be the best way to connect, Catherine? Yeah. Um, LinkedIn's still the best place for me. I'm on 12 Welters on Facebook and I'm on Twitter. So. There you go. Throw Catherine a like on Facebook. Cool, guys. All right. Well, thanks, heaps for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Clayton. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you, Catherine.